Hello, brave, beautiful, beloved soul friends. Welcome to another Conversations with Kristen. I am so grateful for your presence here along this everyday healing journey through life. Happy holidays. We are approaching the end of a year. Gasp. Like, there's so much that comes up as we approach the end of the year. Maybe we're reflecting on everything that's happened, things we've achieved or maybe haven't achieved that we kind of wanted to and we're looking into the new year like, oh my goodness, what's even coming? I don't even know. It's a brand new year that's never existed before and that's like super exciting and kind of nerve wracking and like, oh my goodness, I'm alive. What? You know, there's a lot of stuff that comes up during the holiday seasons and one thing that comes up is this really, really, really strange tradition called New Year's Resolution. Like, the calendar moves its numbers and we're like, new year, new me. As if change could happen instantaneously just because a number on a calendar changed. So it's this really mystical time and there's infinite possibilities that open up to us and we have the chance to create this experience to be whatever it is. So if you are looking for a new year's resolution or are exploring the idea of one, you're in the right place because I've got one that's gonna rock your world. So a lot of times new year's resolutions are very externally focused. Like I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna eat healthier, I'm gonna do this, that. And it's all about the explicit focus on external physicality and reality. But that's not really where our heart is. And because of that, we have a hard time following through with those resolutions. It's not that they're not great resolutions. It's not that there's not a part of us that wants that reality. But at the heart of who we are, most of our being does not care about the external explicits. Most of our inner being really just wants to be happy to feel loved, to feel accepted, to feel welcomed, to feel safe, to feel connected, to feel supported, to feel respected, to feel embraced, and to just feel permission to be happy in the journey. Because the journey is a very long process and life is not a destination, it's a transformation. And so if we think, I'm gonna be happy once I get there, We'll never be happy because there's no such thing as getting there. It's always an ever folding, un uh, ever unfolding journey. And so I invite you to create a resolution, if you will, to create opportunities to experience happiness in everyday life. And I have this project here I'm going to share with you guys that's really been a huge blessing and a huge growing and healing journey for me this past year. And because it's positively impacted my life so deeply, I really, really want to share it with you. So thank you so much for being here and creating space to explore this idea. So the project is called Infinite Moments of, see if you guys can see it, of Happily Ever After. Infinite Moments of Happily Ever After. So I have this binder here and it's all filled up as you can see. And I have two more binders that are completely filled just like this. What it is, is at the beginning of each day, you set an intention. Say, you know, no matter what's going on, no matter what external, explicit, obvious things are happening, my intention is to experience three to five moments of happily ever after. And these are moments. It's not like I had a three hour experience that was nonstop happy. They can be really small individual moments. Because of this, there's room to experience this every day regardless of what's happening. Even if there's a lot of other stuff going on, it is always, 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 always possible to experience at least three to five moments of happiness. And I call this happily ever after. Because we create these happy moments where for a moment that's all that is there's not this past there's not this future there's not all this other stuff it's i'm happily ever after right here in this moment i'm happily ever after right here in this moment and for this moment i let happiness be my only reality for this moment, I let go of everything I, I think I am or I think I'm supposed to be or I think I'm supposed to be doing. I let go of everything that was and might be. For this moment, I let everything go and I let myself just be in this space of happily ever after. 
and it's just a really powerful practice in a lot of ways like you're teaching your mind and your body to be more present you're helping engage your brain's prefrontal cortex and frontal lobes you're helping to regulate your brain waves and nervous systems you're helping to increase cranial nerve functionality and flows through all different kinds of nervous systems there's a bunch of different nervous systems going on there's the central nervous the enteric nervous system you got your autonomic nervous system and your somatic nervous system there's all kinds of stuff going on and this practice actually holds physical health benefits for all of these different modalities inside of the body in addition it helps parts of consciousness it brings parts of consciousness home to the present moment it connects parts of consciousness with one another and it connects the conscious self with parts of consciousness experiencing life beyond direct awareness so there's like this big reunion inside that happens in these moments and when these moments of reunion happen a few times every day one year later, everything is changed. There is so much unity inside within aspects of consciousness because of these little moments of reunion that happened each day. Okay? So there's lots of different benefits to this practice when it comes to healing consciousness, when it comes to healing neurobiological applications. There's health benefits and... Um, like physical health benefits and then like implicit health benefits, which means benefits um, regarding mental, emotional, relational, and action patterned or behavioral or decision-making well-being. And so there's all kinds of changes that happen in this process. And it's cool because it happens so gradually that you don't even know it's happening. You think you're just having some moments of happily ever after. And then a year later, you're like, holy smokes. I have grown and I have healed and everything's so different now and it's all because I started with an intention and I came back to that intention every day. So this process, what you're going to do is you set an intention for the year, which means that as this year ends and a new one approaches, you set an intention for your whole year that's coming up and you say, this is my year of happily ever after. This is the... <laughs> this is the year that I live happily ever after. 2021 is my year to live happily ever after. My intention is to live happily ever after every day, unconditionally, unconditionally. It's not I'll live happily ever after when I have a million dollars in the bank and I have 20 million people who know my work and I have 20,000 friends that are all super rich and like it's not this conditionality of I'm going to be happy when life does this for me. It's I'm going to live happily ever after. Period. End of story. That's what's happening. Okay. <laughs> okay, life. That's what's happening. I don't care what you got planned for me out there, Mr. Life, Mrs. Life. I am living happily ever after this year, no matter what. Okay. Okay. And you set this intention for your year. And then how you apply the intention is every morning when you wake up, you set an intention just for the day, one day at a time. You set an intention in the morning for the day to create or find so you intentionally craft them or you you're on the lookout for them as you move through your moments to create or find three to five moments of happily ever after and this can look like literally anything it can be waking up and realizing that you're breathing <laughs> It can be going outside and being like, oh my God, this sun is shining. There's a great big burning ball of fire in the sky in outer space. And because of it, this thing called day exists. Like I am, this is a moment of happily ever after. It can be eating really good food. It could be feeling the grass beneath your feet. It could be petting your animal. It could be going on a walk. It could be having a conversation with a friend. It could be having a success at work or school. Um, it can be anything. Any kind of moment where you're like, in this moment, I am here and I am happy. Any kind of moment like that. And so what happens is you set that intention in your morning, that energy carries with you through your day. And then at the end of the day, either like after dinner or before bed, 
you go and you journal and you write down three to five moments of happily ever after. And what you can do is start each page with today I lived happily ever after. And when you do this every day, what ends up happening is there's over 360 times that you've written, today I lived happily ever after. What you actually do in this process is you create new implicit memories so your unconsciousness instinctively decides that you're gonna live happily ever after each day. That's pretty cool, right? That's a pretty great unconscious habit to, to create, right? Imagine your brain automatically saying, I'm living happily ever after today. Imagine that automatically being inside of your body, not just your mind, not just your conscious awareness, but your unconscious body has a feeling of that automatically. That's what happens in this process. So it's gradual, but if you stick with it, that's what ends up happening. So you set an intention for your year, and then you set an intention each morning. And it can just look like an intention, like it's not like you gotta do a lot. You know, when you first wake up, you can set your intention. If you have a morning ritual where you meditate or you do yoga or you go for a walk or spend time with your animals or whatever it might be, you can just come to a place of centered groundedness or um, just a place of presence with yourself. You say, my intention today is to find or create three to five moments of happily ever after. And you come back to that intention throughout your day. You establish a few moments of that. You maybe you have a moment of washing your hands and you just kind of realize, I'm here. Like, I'm okay, I'm here, and I'm breathing, and everything's okay, and there's running water, which is a blessing, and like, I'm just, I'm happy here in this moment. And it can just be a few moments like that, and it can be little things or big things or whatever little things come up. And then at your end of the day, you do some journaling. And you can have fun with the journaling too. You can use, you know, different colors of ink or throw some stickers on there. You could draw out your happily moments. Um, if you don't like to do a lot of writing, you can list them as bullet points. If you enjoy writing, you could make it a creative project and really playfully narrate it. Um, you can do it in a scrapbook type thing. You could include pictures along with the words if you wanted to. Maybe you take a picture each day of a moment of happily ever after and you put that in this happily ever after scrapbook. You can really make it whatever you want. But the goal is to have at least one page for every day. And you can have multiple pages if you want, um, but at least one page for every day. If you set an intention in the morning, come back to the intention during the day, and then write about it at night, and then keep all these papers in one space. Or you could buy a notebook and just do it in that, or you might need a few different notebooks. And you can format it however you want. If you want to do it in notebooks or make it a scrapbook, however you want to play with it. But the process is you're creating space to train your unconsciousness to notice the beauty of life, be present, and lovingly give yourself permission to experience happiness in your here and your now. Happiness isn't out there, it's happening right here. Happiness isn't out there, it's happening right here. So that's my suggestion for you guys. It's been such a gift to do this this year, and as you can see, there's been a lot of moments of happily ever after. And it was during some pretty tough times. And so to have that project is really amazing. But even what's more amazing than the physical binders is how it's reprogrammed my neurobiological applications of consciousness. I pause and notice the beauties of life more than I ever have in my entire life. It's a great mindfulness practice. It's a great practice of loving presence. Like I was saying before, it really helps to rewire a lot of the neurobiology that can create implicit battles like anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, dissociation. And it helps unite parts of consciousness in a really powerful way. In addition, this is one of the most powerful practices for healing and liberating your inner child. Because sensations of worthiness and feeling loved and celebrated and feeling happy directly come from child parts or Muppet parts of consciousness within my diagrams of consciousness. But our inner child is comprised of all the parts of us that like to feel seen and loved and celebrated and appreciated and treasured. 
and they carry the core of self-worth and the consciousness as a whole and happiness comes exclusively from these parts of consciousness so this practice is especially powerful for connecting with and healing and liberating our inner child so thank you so much for tuning into this conversations with Kristen. Um, I encourage you to explore this practice. It's really, really powerful and I believe in you. And if you want, you can set little reminders on your phone or put post-it notes up around because I know it can be tricky to get in the habit of doing something new. But once you do it, it's a habit. And it's great because it doesn't take a long time. You spend like one minute in the morning setting your intention you come to it a few times during your day maybe you need a couple reminders to remember it you know when you're first starting off and then in the evening you spend maybe five or ten minutes journaling tops like at most you're spending 15 minutes on this every day at most like five to 15 minutes a day and it's so 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 worthwhile so this new year's instead of looking at all the external obvious explicit physical things that you think you're supposed to do and work on i really encourage you to keep it simple and just have one resolution that connects with all of you when there's one resolution that connects with all of you you're going to be able to achieve it it's when there's a whole bunch of things that only kind of connect with some parts of you that like a month into it you're like nah I don't really care that much <laughs> and then you don't follow through and then you're like oh my goodness I can't achieve my resolution so why even bother trying and then it's kind of just a downward spiral from there but if you can pick like one or two things that really connect with all of you authentically it's a lot easier to pull yourself towards the vision of what you're creating rather than try to push yourself into something you're not totally wholeheartedly invested in so this coming New Year's I invite you I encourage you I challenge you to have an intention of living happily ever after I'm sending you all of my love happy holidays blessings to every part of your miraculous being I'm wishing you all the best and I'm just I'm grateful you're here I'm really just grateful you're here have a beautiful and blessed day and New Year's and I'm sending you all my love namaste the infinite love and light within me see and honor the infinite love and light within you. Mwah. Blessings, beautiful beings.